Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project and I am here with Henk Uren in his lair, his den. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk through uh, aspects of the current Vega system that he has. And to start with, we are going to talk about the tank. Now, what choice of containment did you use here and why? It's steel instead of stainless steel. Why did you choose that? Well, that's a difficult question, but we had all kind of discussions and I started to learn that steel has a different property than stainless steel. So and what is the property? It is not magnetic. It's not magnetic. And so if we're producing things that are right, uh, magnetic, magnetic so clusters, exactly. So these they can't fly out and hurt you. But a very other important thing is that the size of the tank is what I liked because it's um, not too small, not too big. You can fit it here in easily. And another thing, I had a tank on the scrap, uh, the scrap heap, and um, an old butane uh, gas bottle. Mm -hmm. So, what's easier than to um, put a cap on that one and start the experiment? And uh, that is it. This is a standard it. butane gas bottle here. Okay. So, do you want to take us through? Uh, the decision making for various components. What, what's this thing you've got tied off down here, down the bottom there for a start? Uh, that's the grounding, that's the negative. And why did you choose to do that? Because there just wasn't a hole in there, um, in the tank, so I could screw it on. It's rusted because I tried to put it in the water tank uh, before and then it started rusting on that point, but it's just a goal not to do a hole that was accidentally there. And it's near to the ground, easy to connect to uh, the power supply, that's it. But why would you want the outside of the tank to be ground? Uh, that you want to have a high voltage system grounded anyway, and, both, and maybe when it's floating, the system is floating, the power supply is floating, but nevertheless, you don't want to have too many uh, EVOs being um, collected into the system. But what happens if you touch the tank? Nothing. I Why? Think, because I, you grounded it. Yes, exactly. And that's the reason also. That, so the only really dangerous part is the part, the top. Because this part... So what, what is that? that it, that's where the anode is going in, right? This is this is the metal. Right. This is the anode. Mm -hmm. And this is going in. So this is... When I start the process, it's 1500 up to maybe sometimes 2000 volts. And in the beginning I had to use 4000 volts. To, to get the process started. So to protect it, just put a little bit piece of plastic around it and this high voltage cable from uh, an electric fence system. So this is- Which of course is a farm you're very aware of. Uh, just kind of <laughs> stuff, you don't want to touch it. Yeah. And uh, the lid I had from the previous tank, mm -hmm. so I just reused that one mm -hmm. and that's it. And then the-, the so, so how are you sealing that there? Well. That, that is also this time again very difficult to get it closed. I mean, I have to use standard simple components. But they, they, are you there's using a, some rubber, sort of. There's a rubber ring here. Right, so you've got a like and, a gasket ru rubber O ring. Yes, and yeah. then there's a, a big steel ring below. Okay. And this is stainless steel plate. Mm -hmm. So you would expect it to, to be sealed <laughs> but the problem is i've spent many 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 hours to find leaks and close it again and yesterday we found a leak in this one and of course later there is another leak or where it, where it is there is still a leak in the tank and how do you find the leaks i uh, reverse the pressure I, so you put a high pressure in there from a standard sort of compressed air tank yes and yep. then i put take take some soap I make it um, with with soap, and then you see. You see, you, you basically brush on the soak ar soap around the yeah. areas you would expect to leak, and if you see a bubble blowing because you've got high positive pressure inside, you see it. That that is where your leak the is. The standard trick everybody yeah. uses yeah. when when you want to search for a gas leak, but you have to pressurize it. Yeah. and it takes time again. And then for for those people that follow the project, uh, in our early days when we were doing lithium aluminium hydride. Uh, experiments uh, that led to bang we used a combustible gas detector 
and so you had hydrogen in there and then you would put the sensor around the seals and you would, it would go like that so that's another option other people when they're doing these experiments use for instance uh like a gas analyzer that would look for say helium and you would pressurize the gas the tank with helium the reason you would do that is because when you're pressurizing with compressed air you've got nitrogen and oxygen and both nitrogen and oxygen are far 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 larger than hydrogen people like piantelli used hydrogen uh, sorry used helium for their leak testing um or or even pressurized hydrogen um, because you can do this combustible gas analysis and hydrogen finds a hole a lot lot easier than either nitrogen or oxygen because n2 and o2 are 32 and 34 or whatever that they're, they're a lot lot larger molecules than h2 which is just uh, basically two protons and whatever and and helium and so forth so helium is fairly good analog for it without it being combustible so you know if you have the money uh a you're pressurizing with hydrogen but then you've got a problem is you've got an explosive gas that you're then pressurizing not a good thing so pressurizing with helium gives you something that is almost as good at getting through small holes will blow bubbles actually and so you can continue to use the method that hanks just described uh, you don't have the ability to use an, uh, an explosive gas detector, um, combustible gas detector, but uh, at least um, uh, you have something that is fairly good at, uh, at impersonating the ability of hydrogen to leak through things because it really is a very difficult gas to seal. The, the advantage with these experiments typically is that Henk is working with residual air and so if that's the case and it's leaking in, then you're just getting more residual air. <laughs> the pressure's going up with residual air. When you start to introduce hydrogen, there's this partial pressure hole thing and that the hydrogen might preferentially leak out and so forth. And so once you do find a leak, how do you go about sealing it, Hank? Uh, I, I just find the place where it is and I put on some extra glue, you can say, and glue and what do you use like bath sealant silicon sealant no i, I use this stuff i uh, i have it here it's uh, in what we call it uh, we call it polymax it's just a simple glue and this is this is the transparent version mm -hmm. but uh, i've used the gray version you can see it and the black version mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's it and and, and, and the, like the the glass here is sealed with um a grey version of this stuff, of this stuff. And that was my next question. So this is your viewing port, and what kind of glass have you used there? Just normal glass. Standard borosilicate type window glass, yeah? yeah cut. Probably, yeah, I cut uh, yeah. a little piece out of a piece of old glass. Yeah. And see, it's just, you know, th this is about making an experiment, to make an experiment. So the videos you've seen of these type of experiments uh, and in the recent videos we're taken through this window so it's not a fancy window um, it's not a wonderful expensive conflat sort of uh, flange here with wonderful copper seals it's this glue and it's bonded to this hole made in a tank yeah Done. And, and i did it because the first tank the green one i used a more sophisticated solution with the flange mm -hmm. but i had huge troubles to seal it right I, I think well make it simple then i know it's i mean glass is pretty flat anyway so uh, <laughs> the polymers are polymer isn't it so right yeah. so glue it on the polymer it's it, done and, and it, it should not touch the the steel probably but because it could break the glass mm -hmm. so there should be a, 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 a support a support for the glass and that's mm -hmm. the polymer so it works fine and again with this the way you're pressurizing this rubber seal here is fairly standard even with when you're doing these uh, high vacuum systems in yeah. uh, super expensive systems uh, you you're you have these multiple screws where you you adjust them so that you get a nice even yeah. pressure down in their case on the the copper olive or my, or my idea is even the seal. The, the, the vacuum itself is strong because mm -hmm. the 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 number of newtons pressure on this lid is enormous. Mm -hmm. When I sc screw it on, before I vacuum it, 
the screws are already tight. But then when I put the vacuum on, I have to re-tight the screws again mm -hmm. because it. So it should be a self-sealing solution, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. It it it's, it is absolutely difficult to. Uh, it cost me a lot of time to uh, to seal it to every time again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm lucky when it's a long time stable. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much for your time. We're going to look in the next video at the gas manifold for supplying and managing the vacuum and gas. So until then, thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.